let's use the hypothetical that a fighter is signed in an agreement with a promoter or a manager, particularly a manager, right? And they go behind the manager's back and try to negotiate a fight. Guess what happens if that fight is produced? Guess what the manager had the authorization to do? If that manager has a legitimate contract with that fighter, with that commission, and that fighter competes without the consent and or knowledge of his or her manager, guess what the manager can do? Impound the purse of that fighter. Let me say that again. Impound the purse of that fighter. So let's just hypothetically say fighter A negotiates with fighter B. Fighter A and B agree to terms privately without the manager's knowledge and consent. Fighter A is signed to a manager. Let's say fighter B isn't. And they both agree to terms to fight on a card. Once the manager of fighter A is alerted, aware, or realizes that fighter A is competing without his or her's knowledge and or consent, the, the manager had the authority to make a phone call if he or her, he, he or her, manage, the manager, found out after the bout was already, uh, you know, fought, if they already fought already, or go to the fight physically or send a representative to the fight while fighter A is there and go right up to the commission with the documentation and say, this fighter has fought on this card without my consent, without my knowledge. And I have a contractual agreement with this fighter. Guess what the commission is going to do? No problem. The fighter A was supposed to get paid. I'm just using this as an example. Fighter A was supposed to get paid $5,000. When the fighter gets out of the ring to compete, fighter A will not receive that $5,000 check. I can assure you of that. Not right there on the spot. And it ain't going to happen. Do you want to know why? Because the manager is entitled to the contractual percentage based on the agreement that that fighter A had with the manager. Could be 10%, could be 20%, could be 30%, could be 33 and a third, but nothing more than that. That's the maximum. My point is that a fighter can't compete without the manager getting the manager's compensation because the manager has to invest monies throughout the career of this particular fighter. And he or she as a manager is entitled at the bare minimum to recoup their initial investment. This is why it takes a long time for fighters to go through the ranking system and the process of contending for a world title because that's when managers really, really, really benefit from the labor, from the work, from getting out of the red and getting in the green as far as meaningful purses to first and foremost recoup their initial investment and then make a profit. You understand what I mean, Greg? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Makes perfect so, sense. So even if it is true that Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford are communicating, negotiating, talking on the phone privately, they still will have to go through management. Why? Because Al Heyman is the manager and or advisor of Errol Spence Jr. So when I hear people that do not understand the business say, oh, man, he don't he, he he don't call the shots over there. Al Heyman tell him what to do. He works for Al Heyman. Spence is just an employee. 
That's why he got to fight whenever Al Heyman says no. It's just good business etiquette. Why have representation and you're not going to use them? And that makes absolutely it. no sense. Not only that, um, you understand this economic principle that um, you gain more efficiency by having people who are specialists at a specific task. So if you're sitting up here, you hire these people because they're experts. There's no way that you can understand in detail, in an expert level of detail, all these different topics, right? So you surround yourself with a good team and allow that team to go out and execute for you. And to me, it's idiotic not to do that because you're setting yourself up for failure because there's no way that you can understand all of the intricacies of contracts and business and all of that. It's just, it's too much. You pick a lane and you stick with that lane. That is correct. And so this is why Spence told Bob Arum years ago when he was standing in front of Bob Arum. Most of us have seen this on YouTube. When he was standing in front of Terrence Crawford, he said, Bob, you know what you're going to have to do. Call Al. You said you didn't know Al Heyman, Bob. That's what you said. But call Al Heyman and we can get this thing done. That's what he said. Now, if it wasn't true of what I'm saying, then why did Terrence Bar Crawford say he contacted Al Heyman directly? On Instagram Live. Remember, he said that. I talked to Al Heyman directly. If it wasn't true what I was saying, he wouldn't need to talk to Al Heyman directly. He could just go through Errol Spence and they can go ahead and shake hands and get a fight going on. But that's not The other how thing is... No, I was going to throw this out there very quickly. The other thing is this. On that Instagram live, he said repeatedly that Errol Spence is not a boss. That's He's he a said. boss. Terrence Crawford's a boss, but Errol Spence is not one. He's not at the table. So if that's the case, why are you trying to communicate directly with Errol Spence in order to negotiate a fight? These are the things that are complete disconnects between what he is saying and what his team is putting out there as a narrative. And that is the issue that I always had with Terrence Crawford. I don't have a personal issue with Terrence Crawford. I don't know Terrence Crawford. But I see Terrence Crawford as a person that loves to try to control a narrative. And that's always been one of my challenges with him. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree because if you try to control a narrative, what happens is you fall into a pit of trying to continue to keep a narrative going. And then when someone exactly. looks and says, oh, that's a contradiction. Now you got to keep switching the narrative over and over. You got to keep recycling the narrative. Exactly. And that's, that's why it's good to just be honest. And if you don't know something, just say, I don't know. Don't act like you know something exactly. that you don't. Don't demean somebody, you know, in Bud's case by saying, Spence is not a boss. Instead of insulting the guy, why don't you talk about things that you're going to do different if you get an opportunity to renegotiate? And instead of exactly. I try to quote, quote you in the long run, why not just say, look, it didn't. Hopefully, we can really, really get a renegotiation going on after I fight David Ebenezer, and it and, and we're still going to keep it intact as far as integrity. Because one of the things that I'm going to teach viewers this evening is that protocol in this business is extremely important. You can never go over the head of a manager or a promoter thinking that you as a fighter or you as a representative or you as another promoter is going to actually get away with doing underhanded sneaky stuff when a fighter has an obligation or an agreement with a network, a promoter and or a manager. It's not good business, period. Exactly.